Tales of the Empire was a great show with very interesting character arcs, not to mention we finally get more Barris. Today we're going to look at some shots, talk about the story and how it flowed, the good and the bad. Let's get started. Tales of the Empire has two major story arcs with little arcs packed in. It is formatted into six episodes, three episodes per arc. However, instead of saying there are only two main characters, I would argue there are actually three. Morgan Elsbeth for the first three episodes, then Barris Offy for the last three episodes, but the third, I would argue, is Lynn Rakesh, as she also has a full story arc in the last three episodes alongside Barris. We start the first episode with Morgan and the Night Sisters battling a droid army as well as General Grievous. Something I found particularly interesting in this episode was the fact that the droids are actually monstrous and terrifying in these opening shots, taking multiple blaster bolts to fall. This is a stark contrast to Clone Wars and the prequels, where the droids are depicted as weak and uh, silly. Then we have General Grievous. This shot particularly was done well, especially with the lighting. This was an amazing portrayal of Grievous in his element striking down foes weaker than him and laughing while he does it. I particularly enjoyed how his mechanical, guttural laugh was used throughout the first episode. Morgan survives, but quickly gets consumed by thoughts of revenge. Her anger and hate quickly poisons the Mountain Sisters that saved her, and she leads three of them into the grips of danger. The leader's daughter is killed, and Morgan is left alone with this amazing shot of a backdrop of flames indicating that she is on a path that will cause much destruction in her wake. Episode 2 was my favorite of the three for Morgan as it shows her gaining power and meeting Thrawn, who in the Ahsoka show she is devoted to. We begin with her giving a presentation to some of the leadership of the Empire about her improved TIE Fighters that were Thrawn's focus in the Rebels show. The Moffs seem unimpressed, specifically one that is designed to make you think he is selfish and lazy. He is condescending in his tone and his character is depicted as overweight, indicating a type of gluttony and self-interest, not to the Empire which is what the next character we meet depicts. Thrawn's man speaks to Morgan after all the moths are gone. He's depicted as an older, thin man with upright posture, insinuating that he's intelligent and devoted, if not to Thrawn, but to the Empire. The way he speaks is meticulous and mysterious, much like his superior. Upon returning, the people of her city quickly turn against her when she returns with bad news, souring what little kinship she may have felt by being their leader. She speaks of the fact that these aren't her people, a bitter reminder of the massacre of the Night Sisters and how she is alone. Later, once tested, Thrawn enters the picture in all his majesty, mysterious and devout, to the point and always 10 steps ahead. He offers Morgan a chance to get what she wants if she would simply answer why she wants to gain the Empire's favor. Instead of lying like earlier, she tells the truth that it is about revenge. What is interesting about her lust for revenge is the fact that by this time, Grievous, who murdered her mother, is dead, the droid army is defeated, and Dooku, who presumably set Grievous and the droids to eradicate the Night Sisters, is also dead. However, it was not by her hand or by her doing, so the vengeance and hatred still sits in her with nowhere to go and nothing to focus on. She finds her purpose and where to put her lust for vengeance in Thrawn and his plans. Episode 3 takes place after Rebels, but before the events of Ahsoka, where Morgan has exploited everyone under her control. We are met with a previous inhabitant of the city that Morgan rules, and that is now an ambassador for the New Republic. She is portrayed as clean, innocent, and is basically the embodiment of hope, 
everything the New Republic stands for. Juan, who we saw in the second episode, is a broken man and continues to be broken in this episode. Him and the Ambassador confront Morgan, and she seems unfazed. She claims she had a vision, the ones given to her by the Night Mothers that Thrawn is working with in unexplored space, and lashes out at the New Republic Ambassador and the hope she represents. Morgan's guards quickly dispatch the Ambassador's guards and pursue her, eventually blowing up her ship and killing her in the process. But that wasn't enough for Morgan. She closes her grip on these people ever tighter to build the very thing that hails Thrawn's return. In a very symbolic gesture, Morgan orders her guards to burn the nearby forest, and we are left with these amazing shots. The final shot is of Morgan, backdropped by the destroyed ambassador's ship and burning forest, very much like the first episode, but in this shot, she is determined and not lost or fearful. She has her purpose, and it is to destroy what Thrawn wants her to destroy. Now we're going to shift gears into the last three episodes with Barris and Lynn. Episode 4 was my favorite of the entire show. The darkness and grit of it was palpable and captivating. We start with Barris waking up to the screams of the murdered Jedi in her dreams. We then get this beautiful shot of her looking through the only window of her cell straight to the Jedi Temple being destroyed. However, this is the beginning of a bit of a departure from the character we remember from Clone Wars. In many ways, she seems concerned about what is happening. Lynn enters and offers Barris a chance to be free, in a sense, for an opportunity. I particularly liked the lighting of this shot in the cell, where the light is perfectly framed on Lynn's eyes during the scene. We are then brought to this site of the Inquisition's main base of operations being constructed. Being taken through the halls, they end up in a chamber with two other former Jedi Pandawans. Young, impressionable, and foolish. The High Inquisitor is beautifully depicted in this episode with all of his malice and dark side knowledge. The surviving two Padawans later in the episode are tested separately one with Lynn and Barris with the High Inquisitor. Barris, through the duel, tastes the depths of the dark side and eventually, through anger, lashes out at the High Inquisitor, concluding the test. The High Inquisitor was pleased and I loved this shot of him during the end of the duel. Quickly following that, the two Padawans are then pitted against each other to a duel to the death. Again, Barris shows signs of her Jedi training and softer heart, saying that they won't kill them both, and tries not to fight. The fight ensues anyway, and it ends with Barris force choking the other Padawan to death, thus inducting her into the Inquisition. After the duel, she is given this helmet as her new form. She is a tool of the Inquisition and of her new master, Darth Vader who we only get to see for a few moments on screen before Barris puts on the helmet and claims for the Empire. Episode 5 is called The Realization, as it pertains to Barris leaving the Inquisition behind at the end of the episode. However, again, I feel like her character in Clone Wars, who committed murder and terrorism against the Jedi and the Jedi Temple, would not come back to the light so quickly. Barris is thrown into her first hunt, it seems, of a Jedi, and it quickly turns bloody. Barris softly confronts a child, again showing much more empathy than I would expect, and discovers where the Jedi is. The soft nature of this exchange is emphasized by the fact that Barris takes off her helmet to speak with the boy. Lynn, discovering she was lied to by the people, massacres them and kills every single one of them except for the boy who is hiding behind Barriss's legs. We see Lynn and all her hate and devotion to the Empire and the Dark Side with her brutality towards those people. Reaching the top of a mountain, Barriss finds Lynn locked in battle with a Jedi. After crossing sabers a few times, Lynn gets pushed aside and then Barriss and him begin to duel. 
The entire time they are dueling, Barris is trying to talk the Jedi down and tell him to give himself up. For what? To be arrested? To be turned into an Inquisitor? This seems to show some kind of naiveness that I personally don't think Barris would have. Once talked down and the Jedi is disarmed, Lynn strikes him down from behind. It is here that Barris has her realization, turns on Lynn, pushes her off the side of the mountain, and in a gesture of leaving the Inquisition behind her, she throws her helmet off the side of the mountain. Episode 6 is on a snow-packed planet where Barris is now much older and is a type of mystical healer. I personally enjoyed how they aged Barris and made her very Jedi-like for the end of this story. Lynn, of course, is hunting the people Barris was going to help, and there's a small duel. This duel is a juxtaposition of the original duel with the High Inquisitor in the fourth episode. But instead of Barris being the one with the lightsaber, it is she who is unarmed and easily dodging Lynn's attacks, showing the superiority of her personal training in the light side of the Force. Next, Barris warns Lynn not to chase after the child she was after into a cave because there would be no escape. I assume it is because the place is attuned in some way to the light side of the Force. Lynn ignores Barris's warnings and gets trapped in the cave. The family and their Force-sensitive child escapes, and Barris enters the cave to try and save Lynn. Lynn is fearful and desperate, striking at the walls and shadows around her until finally she stabs Barris. The moment she stabs Barris, you see the surprise on her face and they quickly go to their knees together. Barris, in her light side, touched a locked away part of Lynn and caused her to want to save Barris. In the shot, we see yet another symbolic framing as Lynn is choosing Barris over the Inquisition and leaving her saber behind. With their connection reignited, Lynn finds her way out of the cave, symbolizing escaping the clutches of the dark side on her mind and soul. Overall, I really enjoyed Tales of the Empire and was very glad to see Barriss again especially, as well as a younger Thrawn. But I do feel like the Barriss that committed terrorism was not depicted very well in the show. With only 3 episodes and 15 minute runtimes per episode, I felt like her redemption arc was simply too fast. But it was a well done story with many interesting tidbits for fans. What did you think of Tales of the Empire? Did you feel any of the stories didn't quite line up with what you thought? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, I will see you in the next one.